What is going on everyone? My name is Northy and today I have decided to put on the glasses. Not because I am feeling extra smart, but because I am feeling extra horrific in front of the screens today. I just am getting the most raging headache. I don't know why it's happened, but here we are. It's what I've got to deal with. I guess it's not as big of a headache as the current AFL landscape is giving me because my god, nothing is going my way right now. But with that being said, welcome to the review for round number two for the AFL team coach season. And this is going to be the last type of, I guess, video in the sense that we've had everything this week, but it's the last week we've done that. So next week is going to be very, very interesting, but we'll worry about that when it comes to it. We're worrying about right now, and right now we have ourselves an entire round tribute and see how we did. All right, here's the screen, and you can see behind me that massive announcement that was there the last couple of weeks. It's been switched up with the tips screen, so uh, we'll have a look. I don't think it's anywhere here now. Yep, it's all fairly similar to each other. It's just about the competitions, but at the same time, I've looked on shop.team coach and as I've seen it nothing has changed over there everything is still marked as coming soon so we can only hope that maybe things change up I'm gonna go view the prize cards though just to make sure nothing has been missed and yes we still have every prize card available meaning that these spots are still the same so I am really really worried now that we are into the swing of things how is everyone going to go? Who is going to start off on top? Because we haven't got that much time until round three starts, which we've had three days to get cards. And I haven't seen any cards yet. I've only seen certain stores get cards. So there'll only be the few dedicated people who have gone out of their way to purchase the cards, probably even have a chance to compete in round three. So a bit unfortunate, but... We're gonna have to deal with it. There's nothing we can do. We're gonna go through everything else to start though. We'll start with the star powers because star powers again, not a bad week. You can see here, lots of players that had themselves good games. Maxi Gorn did pretty well. I'm actually not too sure about Nick Martin, but I know Tom Green had a good one. Rayshaw was a bit eh. Whitfield did his thing. The reason I can't go too into depth is because for some reason it's all gone now. <laughs> I can't see any of it. You see here, obviously no cards available because we are out of the free week. So you can see everyone here if you want to go back through old stats, which is something that I think I'm actually going to do right now. If we want to check GWS here, once again, my fat head in the way, but you can see Tom Green, 120 points up the top here. And uh, Lockie Whitfield also had himself 102 points up the top here. So not bad. Both my GWS players, once again, doing a top-notch job. We had Maxi Gorn in there as well. And oh my God, I'll talk about one particular player. Uh, annoying, very annoying. We'll talk about him at some point, but you can see... Maxi Gorn had himself 107, pretty happy with that performance, over 100, and I had him on double points. Thank you, mate, appreciate it. I ended up picking him for double points over Whitfield, so that was only five points the difference, that's an extra 10 points for the double that uh, I gained, I guess. But Disley, once again, being annoying, uh, he just has not been helpful for me, <laughs> he really hasn't. We are going to check Nick Martin, though, because this game was so crazy with the points. At 103, so another 100 point performance, very happy indeed. I knew that he could do it, I knew he could get over the 100 point mark, it's just if he was given the opportunities to do so. You can see he had 96% um, time on ground during the game, so definitely had himself a really solid performance. That's just what I need to see from him. 100, po 100 plus point games are really good. And then the last one that was the most disappointing was this Frio versus North game. Not just because of the end result, but you'll have a look here. We have to have a go a little bit down. Andrew Brayshaw with a 91 point. So wrong again. Really, really starting to carry this squad. Really starting to show maybe he's the leader of this crew. He's looking really good. 125 after a 46 possession game last week. 35 in this one. He's just all over it. There's no reason not to have a look at Sarong in most games now. Other good performer, Sheezel. He's starting to be super consistent now. Tom Powell is looking really exciting. Jerry with another solid ruck performance. I think he's starting to finally find his position in this club. Lukey Jackson played well as the ruckman. Lots of question about him and Sean Darcy. Luke Ryan, after a big week, was too shy of a 100-point performance. So not bad again either. I'm happy to see Georgie doing well. Happy to see LDU doing well as well. I think it's Zane Dersma. 11 marks. That's really helpful for a young guy. It does a lot for the confidence. That was the star powers. And like I mentioned, my ultra star powers, we've got Brayshaw, Green, and Maxi Gorn as the double points players. Unfortunate that he, our worst one, was our double points player, but 90 is nothing to get mad at. You can see we had 45 for this one. We're in the top 50 there, 841. We needed 882 to make the top 10. So yeah, still remains ridiculously difficult to get in there. It's, it's Top 10 is just not a, a, a fair... I think a fair way of going about it. Ended up getting 39 with silver top five. The silver star powers, man. I am all over the place right now. I'm telling you, this headache is killing me, but <laughs> you can see a 20 point gap between first and fifth. It's just so hard to get yourself prize cards now. <laughs> but there's that. We're going to go over to top team now. And top four was a bit rough. It started right as Dacos finished his game. 
had himself 61 points. It was just such an awful game. I think it was 61. Collingwood played pretty bad for the most part. They were just sloppy, way below their skill level. And it's why I'm not too quick to count him out. Even after an 0-3 start, I still think Collingwood are at least going to make finals. And I wouldn't be surprised at the top four because like, it was just their skills that did them really poorly in this game. I still think teams are starting to figure out a game plan against these guys, but like, you see things like Darcy Moore in the back line just rushing a hand pass across the face of goal straight to a Saints player. That's stuff that you barely see from that side. And it's not like Darcy Moore's just forgotten how to play football. Uh, like, that is pretty much what you'd have to say to kind of say that this is their skill level now. It's like, they have to completely forget football to have a really poor year. And, uh, I just think Collingwood will find a way back into it. They'll have their games. They play poor like they already have. But uh, they'll be top four or top eight at least. But we mentioned Tom Green. We mentioned Max Gorn. And Isaac Heaney with another amazing game. I think he had 117 against the Bombers. He is so good in that midfield. I think Luke Parker is going to really have to work hard for a spot back in the midfield when he comes back. Because Heaney, Chad Warner, Errol Goulden, James Rowbottom, all those guys in the middle. Even Braden Campbell. Like, there's just so many good players for Sydney now. They just look like they've sorted it out. And Heaney is one of those players who have absolutely found form. He is in a very, very good position to... I mean, he's an early All-Australian favourite. Like, absolutely. I wouldn't go as far as saying Brownlow favourite. But, look, Heaney's looking solid. And... Outside of these three, Nick Dacos' bad performance gave us a 107 position. Uh, we were ranked 405. We had five, 405 fantasy points. Rank 9 for the season, though. That's a, that's a positive. You can see these are all the ones who ended up getting themselves fantasy cards this week. We were a little under 50 points from the 5th place position. And as much as I'd love to say it gets better, it just doesn't. I had a comment that pointed out the Joe Danaher pick was very, very... Very stupid, very dumb, not smart at all. Joe Denner, <laughs> I don't know how I missed, but he had the buy. I mentioned it with the Josh Dunkley pick, why I wasn't putting him in, but apparently I just forgot that Danaher also plays, uh, in, or is also in the buy, so <laughs> it just did not make any sense. Some good picks, Luke Jackson, Isaac Heaney, probably the only really good ones there. Toby Green had an all right game. I think the same for Jesse Hogan. They played West Coast, so it was kind of expected. To be fair, comparing to Hogan's previous game so far, only two goals and 71 points is not that great, but I could honestly think of worse performances for sure. Stephen Mays was unfortunate. He actually went out within the second quarter due to injury. Three broken ribs is what's being told. So you can see there, only the 22 points for him, and it's not even for anything that's his fault. He just had to go out because of poor injury circumstances. You hate to see it, but the back line, other than the top two here, was pretty all right. Whitfield did his thing. Sheezer was good. Powell, I think, was still pretty good, even though the uh, game kind of ran away from him towards the end. Noah Anderson, he's starting to get more involved along with Matt Rowell, even though they did come away with a loss. Bonson Pelly lit himself up in that second half. I think I caught the third quarter, a bit of the last quarter, and Bont was starting to get all over it, so it was good to see that. So wrong, we mentioned crazy performance. Errol Gordon, we've also mentioned just those guys have been so solid, man. It's just the outside forces, unfortunately, gave us... 1588, which is a really poor performance. 172 for the round. Definitely a really poor round here. Oh, Catman. I see Catman in there. I think if I move out the way. I know Catman. I think I've seen him on Instagram. Yeah, that's nice. Good on your buddy. That's awesome to see. So, enjoy that prize card. We're still a fairly ways away from getting ourselves anywhere near that uh, prize card form. But, I mean, when you're making dumb picks like Joe Danaher, I kind of expect to get that. But we're going to have a look finally at the tips. You can see here, last week, uh, we apparently were 0, 0 of 8. Is that for real? We were 0 of 8? No. That's stupid. Look at all... Okay, you can see here, this is clearly not true. <laughs> I've picked Frio, and they won. I don't know why I got a 0. <laughs> this is like robbery. Hold on. <laughs> so, uh, so, 1 and 1, 1 and 2... Uh, one and three, two and four, three and five, uh, three and six, four of seven, five of eight. We were five of eight. We did not get zero of eight as it's trying to tell me here. Like, <laughs> I feel like I'm being bullied, right? <laughs> like, this doesn't make any sense. But we are going to have a look at round three here and we'll see some of the matchups. Brisbane and Collingwood, the grand final matchup. It definitely doesn't feel like it. This will be an entertaining one, though. North versus Carlton. Good Friday Super Clash, it should go Carlton's way. I mean, I hope North can put up a fight as per usual, but 
<sighs> it's gonna be frustrating. Rio Adelaide, probably Frio's way with the form they're on. Saints Essendon, I'm, I'd go Saints. Port versus Melbourne, oof, depends where it's at. This could be a really good one. Dogs versus Eagles should go Dogs. Richmond Sydney should go Sydney. And Hawthorne Geelong should go Geelong. Some pretty easy matchups in there, but obviously I can't even play the game mode until I have gotten a card to uh, enter. Like you can see here, enter a best and fairest or icon code to play. I can't play it yet until I find some cards. So hopefully that means I'll have some cards this weekend to open up for you guys. Uh, not even this weekend, during the week. As soon as I have the chance to, I'll be buying cards and making a video on them, but it's gonna take a bit. And so hopefully that comes around sooner rather than later. And so that's all I have got for today's video. If you guys enjoyed it and are keen on seeing a bit more, especially with all the team coach about to come out, please be sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you are new. Everything is very, very much appreciated. Be sure to also become a member if you really enjoy the content. I've been keeping up with the members only videos for quite some time. So I'm hopeful that you guys are excited to watch all that if you are a member. So thank you all once again for tuning in and I'll see you all in the next one. Goodbye.